the Fearless Fans Podcast, your one-stop shop for everything Texas Tech related. Whether you're alumni, students, or just a fan of the school, we are proud to be on each week providing you the latest in Texas Tech University. And then some. And welcome back to another episode of the Fearless Fans. This is episode five. This will be your host tonight, Ryan. And if y'all are wondering, I'll have uh, Steve with me tonight. Say hey, Steve. Hey, how's it going, everybody? And we got John with us. John? What's going on? And that's all we got for, to, for this time around. We, uh, we, I think we made Keith mad. We were, we were wondering if he actually had a real job. And we were questioning him about his, uh, his abilities and his intentions. And all of a sudden, he had a job uh, trip to make. So he's, he's either out of town or he's bound and gagged in the back of my, uh, my SUV. I'm not sure which one it is. <laughs> Let's hope he's got a job. Well, we'll yeah, find out. I'm sure, you, later. I'm sure you're using a dirty sock. <laughs> Is there anything <laughs> else but a dirty sock? <laughs> That's all we use around here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, tonight we're going to be covering our pick five challenge. This will be our third week. Uh, looks like we had some uh, some uh, some big players in this uh, for this week. Uh, Steve, you want to tell us the recap from last week? Absolutely. So uh, another uh, interesting week from top to bottom so we had uh another player go five and oh and it was actually my dad dan and uh then we had another player go over oh five so uh you know billy sorry our condolences but uh all, all in all though um a general improvement from the group uh, we have a lot of people um at the second place spot for last week at four and one nine people total uh finished at four and one last week nice for the season, uh, Susan and uh, James L. James Wallen actually are leading at eight and two, oh, and Susan's boy. still riding the um, the the tide from her five and zero week last week. And then James has been very consistent four and one each week, so that's kept him uh, at the top. And then we got a slew of five others at uh, seven and three. So a lot of people very in the tight. Uh, and then we do have uh, one person at the bottom of that's at two and eight. Actually, two people at two and eight. So. Anyway, um, as you look at the host on the show, Ryan, you were four and one last week. Congratulations! Thank you much. Yeah, uh, I was four and one as well. I nice. Really myself. <laughs> Dang that Akron pick killed me, and uh, <laughs> and John, John, I got to scroll all the way down. Oh, well, <laughs> you said John, scroll all the you way were down. Three, you, okay. you were um, above 500 you're three and two last week so there you go slow and steady like i didn't have to i didn't have to scroll that far uh keith was also four and one and then steve garcia is also four and one there so john go. you you missed the boat on the four and one party uh you were invited you, you you missed the boat yeah i guess so they had to beat nebraska i think kind of was the reason for that they had a lead and lost it and way to go scott frost appreciate it Steve, yeah. I uh, did some digging for you there, and uh, we were we were curious where in the world did the Zips get their uh, nickname from, and I, I, I think I finally found it. What is it? In, in that that their record is zipping two right now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow! If that's not how they came up with it, it that should be how they came up. That with it. That should be so, it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're looking ahead here for another big week for our pick five challenge so i'll send it back to you steve uh, what are we looking at for this week all right week three is gonna be another uh, tough week uh, for i believe the first of all not a lot of big games out there but there's a lot of parity uh, in the matchups that we're seeing so i think this might be our toughest week yet when it comes to pick five so Game one is going to be hosted in the Big Ten, and it's going to be TCU at Purdue. So um, I like how you're quiet after I say the games because I'm enjoying <laughs> Googling this as we go. Uh, the, the second game is going to be hosted in the Big 12 as Iowa at Iowa State, and actually Iowa State is going to be hosting college, ESPN College Game Day oh, in brother. Ames. So that's how you know it's a slow week in matchups whenever they decide to go to Iowa for when game day. When they send them to Ames, Iowa, that is a slow week for sure. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the SEC game should be a interesting game. Number nine, Florida at Kentucky. Ooh. And by the way, uh, Florida is the only ranked opponent or only ranked team we have actually represented in the pick five this week. Mm-hmm. 
And then we're going to do the Pac-12 game that we hate to talk about because oh, it's hard to talk about your own team, Texas Tech at Arizona. Oh, come on, man. And then oh, the final man. game is – and then another game, the last game is the, just a, once again, just a division one. It's going to be Southern Miss at Troy. So former, <laughs> former uh, coaching side of Neil Brown now, who is now the coach at West Virginia. So um, I think those should be fun, right? What? Right? What, right? What, what, what conference is that? I have no clue. I, <laughs> I <clears throat> lost interest in that. And researching that one. Apparently, you but, didn't uh, lose interest enough to give it to us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I like to look at the ESPN tracker to see what the matchups look like, and if they're close to 50 50, that's usually what I go with. Well, but, all right. Uh, then. So, uh, sauce. John, let's kick it off to you for TCU at Purdue. What you got, my friend? Um, I'm going to give this one to Purdue. Purdue Ooh. wins this one at home. Oh. Okay. I think that's fair. Uh, Ryan, who do you have? TCU for the win over Purdue. All righty. What you got? Well, I'm going to set you over under at the number of times that Gary Patterson ties his shoes at 213. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I'm going to take the over on that one, by the way. Um, <laughs> you know what? Just when you think TCU is sort of falling off the horse, then, then you know, Patterson seems to find a way to um, to rebound and, and put that team back, back in contention. But – I just don't think they're going to do it in Purdue. So I'm going to take Purdue also to win this go. game. All right. Very awesome. good. Awesome. So, Ryan, as we as we jump over to the Big 12 matchup, Iowa at Iowa State, who do you have? Iowa and Iowa State. Oh, golly. Hang on a second. Let me get to the Big 12 page here. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking too nothing fast. Makes great, nothing <laughs> makes great podcasting like listening to Ryan Google search. <laughs> Man, he's got jokes tonight. <laughs> he's on fire. <clears throat> oh my goodness gracious! Okay, so we got Iowa. Kind of Cliff Notes version. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Iowa at Iowa State, the Hawkeyes. Iowa. Okay. All right. So I'm going to take um, Iowa State to take this one. John, who do you have? Um, I still think Iowa State will win some games this year, but they're not winning this one. Mm. So Iowa will beat them. And that'll put him at one and one for the year. I'm taking Iowa. All righty. He's got the Hawkeyes, too. Uh, all righty. So I'll lead off with this next matchup, uh, number nine, Florida at Kentucky. Um, I'm sort of surprised Kentucky's not um, ranked. They've been up and come or have been ranked the, the past truth? few seasons. And, um, They've just and been I'm sort of, very um, much liked in the press, have they? No love from the press. No, definitely not. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, that that considered though, um, you know, number nine Florida is on the rebound, but uh, I just don't think they can go into Kentucky and actually win this game. So I'm going to take the uh, home team <laughs> as well in this one and take Kentucky. Is that kind of like not going into John, Akron? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but 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 with Kentucky, at least I have a chance. Akron gave me nothing. <laughs> So, John, who do you have for your pick for uh, Florida versus Kentucky? Well, I'm, I'm almost positive I saw today that Kentucky's quarterback is out for the year. Um, and maybe that was a different team or whatever. But uh, Florida usually gets the upper hand in this one. Uh, I think once in a blue moon, Kentucky will beat them. Uh, Florida should win this one. They should win this one pretty good. All right. Well, uh, you know, Kentucky has been uh, pretty strong here over the last year to two years. And the only reason why I know that is because our good uh, friend Adaryl has been letting us know that almost on a daily basis, how they're coming back. Um, gosh, uh, I didn't know that they had lost their quarterback, though. That, 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 that puts a different spin on things, doesn't it? I'm going to go ahead and pick Kentucky. I just... Um, you know, they've got a good feel. They've got a nice, uh, strong team. They're at home. They're certainly feeling some momentum here. I'm going to go with Kentucky. All righty. All righty. Interesting. So Interesting. the next game is hosted in the Pac-12, Texas Tech at Arizona. John, we'll start with you. Who do you have in this matchup? Oh, you got to start with me. Um, <laughs> man. Man, I, I – I, I am cautiously optimistic 
for for this game for for a couple reasons. Uh, we put it up on the Guns Up page, I think, yesterday. Um, there's a pretty wide, you know, contrast between Arizona and Tech with with penalties. Um, Tech in two games, the penalties that's been counted against them is combined total of eight. Mm-hmm. Um, Arizona has 21. Mm. Uh, and if you consider, you know, the lulls they went into, you know, they were down 14 to nothing to Hawaii, you know, on the first quarter. Um, came back and made it a game, but uh, their defense got railroaded, you know, by Hawaii pretty good. Uh, even this recent game, you know, they – I mean, can you imagine if Northern Arizona scored 41 on, <laughs> on Tech? I mean, they, they, <laughs> they want to burn down the football facility. Um, I just – I just, man, just Tech's newfound discipline. And I just simply think we have more hitters than they do Mm. on defense. Um, Anybody with any kind of football intelligence would tell you that Jordan Brooks has all the makings of an All-American by the end of the year. Um, I just think we win this thing just because – uh, we're more disciplined than they are. Uh, I think we have a stronger defense than they do. And, and quite frankly, um, has Kevin Sumlin done anything <laughs> since Kingsbury was his OC with that magic years of Johnny Manziel for a couple of years? I mean, he, what has he done? And I'm sure he's a nice guy and he cares for kids. And, you know, he's probably one of the good guys in the game, but, um, I just like Matt Wells in this matchup. You know, just his team will be ready. Uh, Patterson, Patterson's going back to his old stomping grounds now. Now, wasn't he the DC at Arizona State? You know, for a few years, and uh, he knows a thing or two about coaching and, and Tempe. Um, Tech will win this um, by about what Las Vegas said. It'll be by three mm. because of Tech's defense, and they, they're tougher between the years than Arizona is. All right. Wow. Good call. Good call. All Ryan, right. who do you have? Well, Steve, I think the reason why you picked this game is because you know me too well, and that is I don't care if it's Texas Tech versus the New England Patriots. I'm going to choose my Red Raiders every time. <laughs> All righty. Don't care about the stats. Don't even want to look at the game. I didn't even know it was a three-point call, but that you know to see that Tech is favored going into a uh, visiting uh, venue, and this will be the first visiting venue for, for Tech. You know, the weather's going to feel great to them because it'll be a little bit cooler. It'll be a night game, Um, you know, whereas Arizona, you know, that's going to be just like home to them. But, you know, it's going to feel real good for our boys. Um, They've got a lot of discipline, just like John said. Um, I'm I'm not used to dealing with that. I'm not I'm not sure I know what to do with that. (laughs) Just like I'm not sure I know what to do when we have uh, 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 defense hot on our highlight reels. But I'm I'm choosing tech. Interesting. I I don't disagree and you know what i'm drinking kool-aid these days and the kool-aid is colored <laughs> red and uh, and you know matt wells can keep on making that kool-aid every single saturday i'm gonna uh, i've gone from cautiously pessimistic to cautiously optimistic now with uh with tech football Whoa, you know what? arizona has a, a horrible move for yeah. You there, Steve. yeah it is it is it, it i'm sure i'll probably be humbled on saturday but, <laughs> but no truth is i mean arizona has a horrible pass defense and uh, and so Arizona's going to have to score a lot to even have a chance to keep up with us. And so, you know, regardless of what's going on, I just think the matchups are to our favor. And, and golly, I, I like how our football team looks so far. So go Red Raiders. You know, there was a time when we knew that the other team having to score a lot didn't mean a thing. We knew that they would score a lot just simply because our defense was out on the field. Yeah. 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 And we used to tell the other opposing fans all the time, look, we're going to make your defense look like a bunch of fools, but your offense is going to look amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was yeah. it in the UTEP game? Like, Tech deferred to the second half. Yes, they did. Um, and I know we're going to talk about the recap that game this week with, with our interview that we got coming up. Uh but I've never seen Tech defer to play defense first. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been even rare. With Gibbs, they've, they've they did done it a few, a few times. Mm-hmm. They've done it before, but it's been rare. You're right. 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 Yeah. Should be a good game. 
It should be absolutely. Uh, it's one of the late games in the in the uh, nation, so uh, I believe that starts at nine thirty Central that's, Time. That's it. You got yeah. it. Gosh, so, yes. Say a late awesome. night for well, not a late front night for you, Steve. Yeah, I guess that game will probably end around one a.m. for you <laughs> yeah. Texans. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> Hopefully, Matt will. Uh, Matt, uh, Coach Matt will start running the uh, running the ball and run the run the clock down. Yeah. Well, not likely. Yeah. Well, I can always but, hope. Uh, yeah. All right. So our final game is Southern Miss at Troy. Uh, Ryan, we'll start with you. Uh, Troy's been building. Troy's a building team. They've been a slow rising trajectory. Uh, about like the the rise that you get from Abilene driving into Lubbock is just this really slow two and a half hour rise, but they've been rising. Southern Miss, you know, you just don't get them that much. Uh, this is a home game for Troy. Troy, uh, I'm, I'm going to pick Troy for this one. Okay, awesome, awesome. Who you got, Steve? Um, uh, yeah, I'm I'm feeling you on this pick as well. Um, I think Troy certainly has built some big things. You'll know, be interested to see what they do without uh, Neil Brown at uh, Troy. But, you know, I think uh, he's pulled some great players in there. And my understanding is they're still running the same offense that, that Neil Brown had there. So, that being said, uh, we'll take Troy on that one as well. John, who do you have? You know, I mean, I'll just echo y'all's thoughts. I mean, Neil Brown was, was winning at Troy you know, and, and winning impressively. Uh, I know he's got struggles in West Virginia right now, but uh, he, he won a lot there. And so those are a lot of his kids you know, that are playing. So Troy should win this one. I, I would take them by a touchdown. Awesome. Very good. Awesome. Awesome. So, you know, that is a uh, uh, the picks for week three. Some tough picks, man. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's been it's been great to see all the uh, participants this year. It's an even bigger crowd than last year, forty five total players. That's we added great. One, we added one more, so great to see. Uh, good luck to everybody in week three. Uh, it's a pretty close one, so uh, be be fun to hand out some some uh, prizes for this uh, contest when the season's over. Loving it. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So good luck to everybody for this week. Amen. And good we'll, luck, guys. Uh, Pull uh, pull in another uh, episode next week to see how it all did as we wrap it up, and we'll. Uh, hey have hey a... guys, real, real quick, not so fast. Yeah. Um, got a question for y'all. Uh -oh. uh, what did Jay Z call his girlfriend before before they got married? What did Jay Z call his girlfriend before they got married? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I can't tell yeah. you. Uh, fiance. <laughs> 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 oh Lord! Oh man! Hey, no. hey, I got one. I got oh, one. Oh no! Okay. Oh no! I, I went into a pet shop <laughs> and I asked for twelve bees. The shopkeeper counted out thirteen and handed them over. And and he and he said, "You give me one too many." And the other guy said, "Why?" He said, "Why? Why did I get too many?" And the shopkeeper said, "That one is a free bee." Hey. Oh, man. Hey. oh man. <laughs> And y'all are gonna leave it up to me to redeem this. Oh well, man. I mean, we're not gonna park so far. We have low expectations on you. Well, it's it's not so much a joke, it's just a story that, that I that I had. I was uh eating a hamburger tonight and had the bottle of ketchup and you know, as it usually is, the ketchup doesn't come out of the bottle. You know, that's happened to y'all, right? Right? Where the, where the ketchup doesn't come out of the bottle when you're shaking yeah, it? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm getting frustrated because I want to get my hamburger. I'm hungry, right? So I'm furiously shaking this bottle of ketchup. Well, long story short, I get ketchup all over my face. Hmm. So looking back, I can see the mistakes that I did. I realize how much of a fault it is. I guess you could say I have 2020 hindsight. <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> That's Heinz sight. Heinz sight. Nice. Thank you. Very nice. That's something. I can't believe we're gonna. Hey, do we need that. to tell? Um, do we need to tell everybody about our interview on Wednesday night? Absolutely, man. You want to share that news with them? Uh, yeah. Well, we, we've got the the president for the Texas Tech Alumni Association, uh, nice. Kurt Langford. Wow. Uh, it's going to come talk to us and it's going to be a, uh, we'll get the episode recorded. It's going to be eight 15 Wednesday night. Um, and it's killing me fellas. Um, eight 15 is the time we are shutting down the fellowship hall of the church and getting people out to their homes. So I'm going to miss this. Um, 
but I sure hope y'all have a good interview you know, with Kurt. And uh, I'm really excited that we can kind of branch out our, our, our tech talk a bit, you know, to more than just sports, you know, that we can actually bring in people from the university. And, and we hope this is kind of the start of something big with yes. not just Kurt, but uh, we, we've got our sights set on some pretty, pretty good tech folks to come talk to us. So we'll, hopefully reach out to them and maybe they'll uh, be accommodating and help us. And if they can't, that's okay too. But it's a new era for us. We're looking forward to hear Kurt on Wednesday. Awesome, man. Nice. Yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, yeah, Kurt Langford's, uh, I, I know he's got a lot to share and um, super excited to have. Not only is he the president, he's the president and CEO of the Texas Tech Alumni Association. So he's a big dog rolling in to talk to us all. So That'll be great. Cool stuff. Can't cool wait stuff. to hear that one. So, Ryan, you want to take us home? Well, sir, thanks so much for uh, for your participation in the Pick 5 Challenge, and we'll be looking forward to seeing the results from next week. And we'll have a recap for you here uh, for the next episode from uh, the UTEP game. And y'all stay tuned. Thank y'all so much. Take care, everybody. Thanks, guys. Y'all have a good night. Reckham Tech. Guns up. Thank you for listening to the Fearless Fans Podcast, a podcast about everything Texas Tech related and then some. All of our episodes are written and produced by Steve McKelkey, Keith Abbott, Ryan Butler, Steve Garcia, and John Thomas, unless otherwise noted. Don't forget also to follow us on our social media pages on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Opinions expressed on this podcast are solely the opinions of the show host and intended for only for the purposes of this podcast. Yeah.